Hi, welcome to Chemical Reactions. My name is Dr. English and today we're going to be talking about what is a chemical reaction. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is a chemical reaction, representing chemical reactions symbolically, why do chemical reactions occur, symbols of chemical equations, and finally some practice writing chemical equations. So the first question is, what is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is the process by which one or more different substances are converted into new substances with different physical and chemical properties. So what are some examples? One example could be the cooking of an egg, the tarnishing of silver, the ripening of a banana, or the baking of bread. Let's look at how we would represent chemical reactions symbolically. A chemical reaction can be described symbolically using a chemical equation. Chemical equations identify chemical formulas as either reactants or products using different symbols. So what's a reactant? A reactant is a substance that enters into a chemical reaction, typically on the left-hand side. A product is a substance that is produced by a chemical reaction and is typically on the right-hand side. So below, we have a chemical reaction. And as we look at it, this is what we know so far. Sodium, water, are our reactants, while sodium hydroxide and hydrogen are our products. So why do chemical reactions occur? Through a complete reaction, atoms have the opportunity to obtain a complete set of valence electrons and become more stable. It's all about the stability. New substances are produced as existing bonds are broken, atoms are rearranged, and new bonds are formed. Let's look at some symbols associated with reactions. A plus sign can mean things like reacts with, or and, or combines with, or plus. An arrow can mean yields, gives off, produces, and forms. So let's go back to our original chemical equation and add in symbols. So we'll start with sodium reacts with, which is now representing this plus sign right here, water to produce, which is represented by our arrow, sodium hydroxide, and, which again is our plus sign right here, hydrogen. Physical states of matter. Physical states of matter can also be represented symbolically, where a little s can mean a solid, a little g can mean gas, an L can mean liquid, and an AQ means aqueous. And when we look at the term aqueous, that means a substance dissolved in water. Let's add in our physical states to our chemical equation. Let's start with solid sodium. So the solid is now coming from that little s right there. Reacts with liquid water. So the liquid is being represented by the little l to produce aqueous sodium hydroxide, so that aqueous is represented as that little aq symbol there, and hydrogen gas, and the gas is represented by the little g. And that is how we would represent physical states in our chemical equation. Let's do a couple of examples. Silver 1 nitrate reacts with copper to form copper 2 nitrate and silver. The first thing that I would suggest that you do when writing out a chemical equation is look at the formulas that you are absolutely sure of and write those down. And those that you're not 100% sure of, take the time, especially if they're ionic compounds, to write out the positive ion, the negative ion, and write the correct formula. That is absolutely key, especially when we move on to balancing. So let's look at our first chemical formula, and that is silver 1 nitrate. Now we know the symbol for silver is Ag, Ag, and that Roman numeral tells us it's Ag plus 1. Nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So when we put these together, because it's a plus 1 and a minus 1, our first reactant would be AgNO3. Our other reactant is just copper. So copper we can just represent symbolically using its atomic symbol, which is Cu. Then we go on to our products. The first product is copper to nitrate. We know that the symbol for copper is Cu. The Roman numeral tells us the charge, so that would be plus 
2. And again, we have nitrate, so that is going to be NO3 minus 1. And when we write this chemical equation, we have to take our positive 2 and cross it down, our negative 1 and cross it down. So our final formula would be CuNO3. Two. Our last product is going to be silver, so we can represent that symbolically by putting an AG. So now we're going to take all of this and put it into a chemical equation. So if we look back at our word equation, it says silver 1 nitrate, so we're going to start with that, AGNO3 reacts with, that's a plus sign, copper, which is Cu, to form, which is going to be our arrow, copper to nitrate, which is CuNO3 2, and, which is a plus sign, and finally silver, which is a G. And therefore, we have our chemical equation representing this word equation. Let's look at another example. Hydrogen peroxide, which is given as H2O2, must be kept in an opaque container because when it is exposed to light, it decomposes to form water and oxygen. Write an equation that describes this reaction. Now remember, an opaque container means that it's not see-through. Typically, if you ever go to a grocery store or a drugstore, if you try to purchase hydrogen peroxide, it comes in a brown container, and that is actually on purpose because if hydrogen peroxide is exposed to light, it will break down into, you know, water and oxygen. So our reactant is given to us, and that is H2O2. And our first product is water, which we know is H2O. And our second product is oxygen, and we know that oxygen is a diatomic, so that is O2. So when we go back and we write the chemical equation, and we look back at our word equation, it states that hydrogen peroxide, so h 2 O2 decomposes, so it's a decomposition reaction, so we're going to put an arrow to form, which can also be represented by our arrow, water, which is H2O, and oxygen. And that is how we would write this chemical equation. So what did you learn? We talked about what is a chemical reaction. We looked at representing chemical reactions symbolically. We talked about why do chemical reactions occur, which was, remember, all about stability some symbols associated with chemical re equations, and finally we did a little bit of practice writing chemical equations at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.